Cancer in South Africa is an emerging health problem, one of the leading cancers in women, following a worldwide statistic claiming the lives of hundreds of thousands of women each year. Lifetime risks of developing breast cancer vary from a low of 1 in 81 in black women to a high of 1 in 13 among white women. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are creating awareness about common cancer in women which is breast cancer. Joining us in studio via Zoom is Jane Askus, who is from the Marketing and Communications Department at the Breast Health Foundation. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you so much for inviting me. Now, um, for the viewer that is sitting at home and watching and does not understand what breast cancer is, please explain it to us. So, our body is made of millions and billions of tiny little cells. Each cell has a job to do within the body. When cancer comes along, it's one tiny little cell that doesn't listen to the body, it doesn't do its job, but what it rather does is make a copy of itself. And then that copy makes further copies. And so it starts with one tiny little cell not doing its job, not listening to the body and making copies and then its copies makes copies and that's where you get a lump or something like this is this thing that's constantly growing in the body and not doing its job so jenna we have always known that uh, breast cancer usually attacks women or rather attacks women only but in the recent years we have also learned that men can get um, breast cancer too how is that possible Absolutely. It's a huge myth that only women get breast cancer. Males get breast cancer as well, and it's about 2 to 3 percent of breast cancers are in fact male breast cancers. They have breast tissue as well. They can't breastfeed, but they have breast tissue, which means they are able to get breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So now let's look at the uh, most common causes of breast cancer. Let's start with the males. What are the common causes of breast cancer in males? So the common causes are similar between males and women and there's not one cause that will say this is the cause of breast cancer. There's not one thing. Rather, there's risk factors. Factors that could increase your risk of developing breast cancer in your lifetime. Those risk factors are things like your genes, your family history. Is there a family history on your mom? and on your dad's side of cancer, of breast cancer, of prostate cancer. Then other things are lifestyle factors. Do you drink? Do you smoke? Um, are you in a safe environment? Things like that. And they all contribute to the risk factors of you possibly developing breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So now, how can we tell that, you know, you might have breast cancer? What are some of the symptoms that we can look out for in our bodies? This is a great question because we don't know what causes breast cancer, but the best thing we can do is detect it early. Detecting breast cancer early means the treatment is easier and ultimately saves lives. So what are the signs or symptoms of breast cancer? Everyone should be checking their breasts, males and females, and looking out for these signs or symptoms. Everybody knows a lump, feeling a lump or bump in their breast. This could be anywhere from up by the collarbones to underneath the armpit to the breast area and right to the middle of the chest. Any kind of lump. Then we're not only looking for lumps, but we're looking for dents. Your skin pulls in. Any kind of skin changing, is there puckering or it looks like orange skill, peel on your skin. Then we look at the nipples. Are there little scabs around the nipples? Okay, kind of it looks a little bit like ex ex eczema. If your nipples always were inverted, so collapsed in, that's okay. But if you had nipples that stood out and now they've collapsed inwards, that's a sign of symptom, mm -hmm. as well as nipple discharge. So we're not saying go and squeeze them, eventually something will come out. But it's spontaneous discharge, milky, bloody, brownish discharge, normally from one breast, that is also a sign of symptom. Mm -hmm. Generally, what you should be doing is a breast examination once a month. 
You can do this in the shower, lying on the bed, in front of the mirror, where it was comfortable for you, as long as you do it. Mm -hmm. And during this rest, Jenna? Jenna, can you hear me? Jenna, can you hear me? I think we are currently experiencing um, a technical glitch. It could be on her side or on our side. Now, during the month of October, South Africa is, is among the countries that observe breast cancer awareness each year. Now, this year, there has been a nationwide drive being done by the public as well as the private health care structures to raise awareness of this debilitating disease across all races and class structures. We will be discussing that and more. For now, let's take a short breather. Make sure that you don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Soda Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Now, if you've just tuned in tonight, we are talking about the most leading type of cancer in women since October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We are still joined by Zoom by Jenna Scoos, who is from the Marketing and Communications Department at the Breast Health Foundation. Jenna, uh, welcome back to the show. Now, there's a question that I wanted to ask you before the, um, the ad break. Is there maybe um, a certain age where people need to start worrying about the risk of you know, um, being diagnosed with breast cancer? Thank you. This is a very, very good question. So breast cancer is pre predominantly known as an older woman's disease. And this is also a myth. Uh, breast cancer can affect anyone from any age. So I was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was 17 years old. I was very, very young. So we should mm -hmm. be teaching our young ladies from the age of um, menstruation, the bird, the beads, and the boobs. Mm -hmm. so as a lady becomes um, as a woman, we should be teaching her how to examine younger and younger, as well as in men, younger and younger. So all ages are affected. Mm -hmm. Now let's uh, move swiftly to your foundation. Tell us about it. What is it all about? Wonderful. So I work for the Breast Health Foundation. We are a not-for-profit organization and we focus on breast health and breast cancer education, awareness and support. We focus a lot on educating our public, everyone that we can educate on breast cancer, debunking the myths and the importance of how to do a self-breast examination and those signs and symptoms of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Then we work in a lot of public health breast clinics and oncology units and our team members who are all breast cancer survivors themselves counsel and navigate patients who are diagnosed with breast cancer through the healthcare system, helping them and supporting them. Mm -hmm. So how important is it to collaborate with other foundations like yours to help spread the spirit of breast cancer awareness? We believe at the Breast Health Foundation, it's very, very important. We are part of an umbrella group or organization called the Cancer Alliance. And this is an umbrella body of all the cancer NGOs in South Africa, which means that we all work together. So if there is someone that contacts that we do not serve, then we can contact one of our fellow NGOs or if we need to one of our fellow NGOs, there is too much education and help needed in the cancer space in South Africa to say, I'm going to do it all on my own. So mm -hmm. partnering and collaborating with fellow NGOs is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about partnership and collaborations from other NGOs, let's um, talk about the government. Do you get any kind of support from the government since the establishment of your foundation? We are a not-for-profit organization, so we are not funded by the government. However, in many ways, we do partner with government institutions. We work a lot within public health hospitals, and we want to access the majority of our country. So then we do need to partner with our government, and we are thankful for those partnerships. 
Mm -hmm. So for those who have, you know, loved ones that have recently found out that they have breast cancer, how can they better support them, Jenna? You know, breast cancer is a very, very difficult disease. And I think every person reacts differently. So it's important to first think about your loved one and think about how they react in certain situations. Know that everybody reacts differently. Be there for them. Give them as much love and support as possible. If you need to, go with them to appointments. Write down their questions. You can also ask your loved ones, how can I help or support you? Because often they don't know. Sometimes it's just a cup of tea. Sometimes it's being there so they can have a cry on your shoulder. And sometimes it's treating, treating that person normally. They don't want sympathy, they don't want sorries, they want to be treated as a normal person. And that's often it. Just treat me as a normal person and help me when I ask you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, practical tips. Things like make supper for their family, fetch the kids from school, um, things like that. Do the grocery shopping, come and clean the house. Those practical things are very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. So we understand that the treatment of breast cancer is a, is a draining one emotionally and also physically. How long does it take, you know, when, how long does it take for some to actually say, you know, what they've, they've recovered, they have, you know, conquered um, cancer? So we say that someone is a breast cancer survivor the day they get diagnosed with breast cancer. Okay. But everybody's breast cancer journey is different. There's not one type of breast cancer. There's many different types of breast cancer. And there's many different types of treatment as well. So it depends on the type of breast cancer and the type of treatment that person gets as to how long their treatment will be. And then thereafter, how long will it take them to feel a little bit of normalcy again? Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to understand, are you doing enough, you know, as, as NGOs and MPOs to make sure that you educate people, especially people don't, that don't really know the importance of, you know, doing those checkups, you know, once in a while. Are you doing enough in terms of partnering with health, um, health institutions to make sure that people are aware about the importance of going for those regular checkups? Jenna? So we partner wherever we can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. Ah, there we go. So we partner as much as possible um, with media partners, with health institutions, with primary health care clinics, with universities, with nurses, wherever we can, we partner because the message is important. The message of early detection and how to do your self breast examinations is very, very important. And it's one of our major aims as our organization is to create this education. So from our organization, we, we educate wherever and however we can. Um, and we love to have partnerships with primary health care clinics and all health institutions to create further education. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jenna, the conversation will obviously continue after the air break. Now, let's take a short breather. And after the air break, we will dive into health care tips and more. Make sure that you stay with us. Welcome back. You are still watching Soda today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We have reached the last segment of the show and we are about to wrap up the conversation about breast cancer awareness. We are still joined via Zoom by Jenna Scoos from the Breast Health Foundation. Now, Jenna, is, is it possible for someone who once got breast cancer wants to get it again, maybe, late, maybe later in life? Thanks for that question. Absolutely, it is possible. So as I mentioned previously, there's different types of breast cancer. These different types of breast cancer are treated differently. It also depends on how advanced your cancer is. So breast cancer starts within the breasts and then it spreads to the lymph nodes and possibly to the other parts of the body. So breast cancer in the breast doesn't kill us. We don't need our breasts to live but it's breast cancer's ability to spread to the other organs in the body that is then severe, mm -hmm. and we worry about that. So we always try and treat the breast cancer as much as possible within the breast. 
-hmm. That being said, the doctors only know what is possible. So they will always do their absolute best to treat the cancer as much as possible. There are chances of recurrences and the breast cancer coming back. There's also chances of a completely new breast cancer mm -hmm. or a completely new cancer coming back. Now, I, I want to understand, Jenna, is there maybe a specific um, lifestyle that you're expected to live after you've managed to beat cancer, like breast cancer? Are you supposed to, to do things differently now? What is expected from someone that has actually managed to beat um, breast cancer? So going through breast cancer treatment is very, very difficult and it changes your perspective as a person. And many people treat this differently. So some will say, life is short, I'm going to eat the cake, I'm going to ride the motorcycle, I'm going to smoke the cigarette. Others say, this was scary, I don't want it to happen again, I'm going to do everything in my power to not get this again. I'm going to run the marathon, I'm going to drink the green ju juice, I'm going to be as healthy as possible. Hmm. Generally, we advocate for a healthy lifestyle. Everything in moderation, lots of green veg, fruit and veg, eat well, and then exercise decreases your risk of recurrence as well. Mm -hmm. As a survivor, we say, enjoy life, but try and be as healthy as possible. Mm -hmm. So now if anyone wants to be part or know more about your foundation, how can they do that? They can either go to our website, which is www my breast m y b r e a s t dot o r g dot z a or they can phone our 24 hour support line which is 0860 283 343 mm -hmm. so um earlier on i did mention that you know you know the whole cancer journey can be draining emotionally and mentally is there any support group that you can recommend to someone that is currently diagnosed with breast cancer Absolutely. So as the Breast Health Foundation, our support group is Bosom Buddies and we have WhatsApp groups, we have support groups every six weeks, we have Zoom meetings, um, we have Sunday walks and all sorts of things. We have a great community of survivors, ladies going through the journey and I would encourage anyone who has been diagnosed with breast cancer to join our support group or any support group because you are not alone and you do not have to do this alone. Mm -hmm. So part of those uh, support groups, I, I want to understand, Jenna, what are the questions that most people ask, especially those who've just been diagnosed with breast cancer? What do they want to know from people that people like you actually who are cancer survivors? So it depends on the treatment and different patients will have different questions about each set, of, each set of treatments, whether it's surgery or chemotherapy or radiation or hormone therapy. Um, big questions are, am I going to die? Why me? Um, unfortunately, we don't know why cancer chooses a specific person. Um, we find and we, we have this beautiful community of, of inspiring women and we would never wish something like this on any of them. And then those questions will also be things like, what are the side effects to chemotherapy? How do I manage my side effects? What do I do when I feel nauseous? What do I do when I feel this? Um, so we can help and assist with that. And then different individuals will have different emotional challenges that we will try and help them through. Mm -hmm. So what has um, Breast Health Foundation done this year, you know, in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month? So in October, we, um, we don't create our own events, we attend events. Mm -hmm. So we have attended many, many events this year, and we educate as much as possible wherever we can. So lots and lots of education, lots and lots of education on how to do your self-breast examination. We've done lots of radio interviews. We have a little video out on um, the SABC channels and your E channels 
on how to do a self breast examination. We've got lots of breast cancer stories on our Facebook page, on our social media pages of breast cancer survivors. We are also celebrating our 20th year as a foundation. So oh, the Breast Health amazing. Foundation has been around for 20 years mm -hmm. and we are celebrating that throughout this month. Thank you so much, Shena, for joining us. And we are also happy that, you know, you're celebrating your 20th year. I mean, that is big. And also, you know, continue spreading awareness about the importance, you know, of knowing about what is happening in your body. Because people don't really learn much about, uh, you know, breast health and anything that has to do with breast cancer. Thank you so much once again for joining us in studio. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a good evening. Now that was Jenna Skuse from the Breast Health Foundation talking to us about the importance of breast cancer awareness as we were observing Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us by simply sending us an email on sowetotoday at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-9333000. From myself and the rest of the team we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this so it's goodbye for now